For millions of Americans, Saturdays in the fall are synonymous with college football. People gather in groups, sometimes in excess of 100,000 people, to cheer for their team and socialize with other ecstatic fans. However, many fans do not view all opponents in the, in the conference in the same way. Games against some opponents are considered more important regardless from their impact on comfort standings. The Territorial Cup between U of A and ASU is one notable example being that it is ranked the second biggest rivalry in the nation. The Rocky Mountain Showdown between CU and CSU is another. Looking at team rivalries as an ethnographic element reflects the competitive culture that exists in college football for athletes, coaches, universities, and fans. Factors that determine a rivalry include geographical proximity, team identity, winning history, and the outcomes of previous interactions. Fans then identify with their team emotionally and relatedly by collecting team memorabilia or in more dedicated manners like body paint or other adornments. According to a study done by Tyler and Cobbs, central to the conceptualization of rivalry is the process of social categorization and seeing the self and others as members of in-groups and out-groups. For some sport fans, a favorite team becomes an extension of oneself, and opposing teams and their fans are seen as dissimilar outgroups. In the eyes of the average CU student, CSU represents a region in northern Colorado where the buffalo do not roam and the people do not bleed black and gold. It must, as some people might say, suck to be a CSU Ram. Overlapping my obvious bias is an article published in Economic Inquiry called You Are Close to Your Rival and Everyone Hates a Winner, a study of rivalry in college football. In general, bi-directional rivalries are strongest between schools from the same state meaning that regardless of CU's position in the Pac-12 and CSU's position in the Mountain West Conference, the Rocky Mountain Showdown produces an intense rivalry braced on in-state pride. The effect of CU and CSU being in the same state is comparable to two schools having played each other for over 100 years. Fans also tend to direct rivalrous feelings to the teams their favorite school has played the longest. CU leads the 86-game all-time series with 62 wins, 22 losses, and two ties, and a reoccurring contract lasting until 2020. Not only has this Colorado rivalry lasted almost a century, eight of the last 12 games have been decided by six points or less, ensuring that the Rocky Mountain Showdown will enlist a competitive spirit in both universities for years to come. Finally, rivalry culture would not be complete without the ruckus and badmouthing that coincides with college football tailgates. Waking up as early as 7 a.m. to pregame the pregame has become a Rocky Mountain Showdown ritual. Hundreds of students dressed in CU and CSU attire pack into the backyards of houses and pass around handle poles while chanting fight songs. At Sports Authority Field, a neutral ground for both teams, thousands of fans loiter around parking lots, taunt their sworn rivals, and tailgate until kickoff. Traditionally, once the game begins, fans will sit opposite of their rivals and cheer until the final whistle. The atmosphere is always loud, proud, and rowdy throughout the contest. Like any good in-state rivalry, University of Colorado and Colorado State University play for a year of bragging rights and ownership of the state.